Monday Night Chat with Wong Chen. Brought to you by the Member of Parliament for Kalanajaya in collaboration with Invo. Welcome to Monday Night Chat. We are very happy to announce this is our 40th episode. We don't really keep track of what we've talked about on Policy Mondays, but I hope that this is not going to be a repeat on it. This week, we're going to just uh, say first before we start uh, our goodbyes to Tanya, uh, our, my main researcher. She's gone off to Oxford. And then also Nadira, who has got a Shevling scholarship and she's going off to University College London. So goodbye to the girls. Uh, we hope to see them again very soon and uh, to always stay in touch. Uh, the P104 treats you like family. <laughs> so, you know, you can never get out. <laughs> okay. Now, the other thing is we just want to... Uh, announced that uh, it is really the first anniversary of Invoke, our collaborators. So happy birthday, Invoke. Okay, let's get down to the, to the Policy Monday. Okay, Policy Monday this way, we're going to talk about uh, local government. Local government basically means like in, if you're in Subang Jaya, it's uh, Malis Pabandran Subang Jaya. If you're living in PJ size, then MPPJ. Yeah? So local government is essentially your local services or local authorities. Um, why is it that we're looking at local government this week? We're looking at local government this week because local governments are so important uh, because they are the first line of uh, contact or government contact with the people. Uh, people always complain about potholes, uh, landscaping, rubbish on the road, uh, garbage collection, uh, drains, uh, those basic things that uh, citizens are, are angry or are upset about are always to do with the local government. right? So that's the first point of contact. The other thing is, uh, the issue here is about the service and the quality of the local government. Of course, there are also allegations of uh, mismanagement, wastage, corruption, so and so forth, or abuse of power. Yeah? As we saw this uh, last week, there was a video of a woman threatening a local government enforcement officer. So all these are very emotive and very straight in your face issue. But for Policy Monday, we're concerned primarily with structure and system. And the key issue that we want to talk about is issue of accountability which is related to the issue of corruption and also wastage. Now, let's start off by saying that local government is really, really powerful. Uh, their budget sometimes overshadows even state governments. The local government budget is humongous. Yeah? So that's why it's so important. The local government of uh, MPPJ has a budget close to about 600 million a year, 500 to 600 million a year. That's equivalent to the state of Kelantan. Yeah? The same budget for the entire Kelantan government. Yeah? Uh, another example is MPSJ, uh, Subang Jaya. They have a budget close to 300 million a year. That is bigger than the entire state of Perlis, which has a 200 million budget. So that is why it's important that we talk about local government. The other source of power that the local government really have is to do with uh, development orders for developers. So someone wants to build a building, they have to deal with setbacks and they have to do with plot ratio. If the local government uh, abuses its power and is quote unquote corrupt, they could give these developers a major uh, benefit for them, right, by increasing plot ratio or even deal with a lower setback. This allows for the uh, developers to make a big margin, millions and millions more. Therefore, we suspect there is corruption keep payback on the issue. Therefore, it's so important the powers of local government and the ability to uh, generate hundreds and millions or even billions of income a year for the developers. Uh, is tied in to the issue about accountability. Uh, as we've seen in the case of uh, MPPJ, we've been fighting the Sport City project, which is highly contentious, and we managed to stop them after four years uh, in office. So uh, that's why the issue is very emotive to the people on the ground. So how do we enhance accountability? Because we need accountability to be higher. The easiest solution is direct election. Yeah? That means local councillors and the mayor should stand for election. What is the current practice at the moment? The current practice at the moment deals with, uh, is, is not really transparent. It is also subject to abuse because the councillors are appointed. The mayor comes from a list from the federal list that is then picked and decided by the Menteri Besar. Yeah? As for the councillors, they are appointed by the Menteri Besar and the political party in charge. So, uh, as so therefore, the direct accountability of councillors and mayor is actually directly to a person, the Menteri Besar, or to the party. It is not accountable to the public. Therefore, the only solution is to do direct elections. Now, when I first became a member of parliament in 2013, I took the view that you know direct elections for local government 
is unnecessary because it costs us a lot of money and time and a lot of jostling for power and so 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 and so forth. And it could have negative impact that the that the um, the person elected might abuse his power so and so forth. But I think uh, after four years in office. And having experience and heard about so many problems with local governments, I think the only way forward is really to push for local government. So I fully support the initiative by some partners of uh, of Pakatan, in particular P- uh, in particular DAP, and uh, I hope that PK will change its stance over time then uh, to support the idea of local government because I think that is the way forward. If we can't do local government elections, then what can we do? Well, there are very few things. Uh, there are few things that we can actually try to do. We can implement an anti-corruption, anti-bribery system, uh, which is available under ISO, uh, and implement it in the local government. A local government like MPPJ or MPSJ can easily afford, they got 300 million to 500, 600 million a year, so they can easily afford a 10 million dollar system to make sure that uh, everything is done properly and according to paper. Yeah, They can also create an independent internal complaints department. You know, like we got all this, for instance, police have a lot of issues. So the people have asked, uh, the, well, people have demanded and NGOs have demanded and MPs have demanded that the police set up their own independent commission to take public complaints. We can do the same for local government. Yeah. Lastly, I think it's very important that the local government also live stream all its proceedings, especially when it deals with development uh, process uh, approvals for, for uh, developers and housing and stuff like that. Yeah. So, best solution, local government election, uh, interim solution, carry out these three things, anti-bribery, uh, anti-bribery uh, systems, which cost about 10 million possibly, yeah? and then uh, independent internal complaints department, which may cost 1 or 2 million to set up, and essentially live stream proceedings, which cost almost nothing. Okay, that's it for Policy Monday. Okay, we are having Q&A this week. So we got three questions as usual. The first question is on Forex RCI, the, uh, the one that, where Dr. Made is being asked what happened to the Forex losses. Uh, what are my views? Well, I intend to, uh, well, I intend to wait and see what Mahade has to say, Dr. Made has to say, and then after that, we will run a special policy Monday on the Forex issue. Uh, basically exploring what really is the power of Bank Nagara, how do we get into this thing and what can we do to avoid future losses like this. But generally the proceedings have been a bit, a bit uh, unusual. I think the inquiry uh, panel, uh, uh, some of them seems to be okay, they're just inquiring about stuff, another ones are, are quite gung-ho to paint a certain picture, but I think uh, so far they haven't managed to, to uh, implicate or even to to tarnish the reputation of Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, who is really not involved in this matter. Yeah? So we shall see what happens next week uh, when Dr. Mahdi is scheduled to be uh, asked by Forex uh, RCI. Okay, we move on to the Rohingya issue. Uh, what are my views on the Rohingya issue? Well, it appears that this is a, is, this is a form of ethnic cleansing, therefore it has to be objected to uh, vigorously by the Malaysian government. They must send a message to Myanmar. Uh, but let's talk about the internal Malaysian politics in reaction to Rohingya issue. I think uh, we all saw Najib and Hadi Awang in December 2016 raising hands together saying that they are going to fight and defend the Rohingya issue. So why did it take almost four or five days after the whole matter blew up for the, for the Malaysian government to actually take any real steps to, to uh, deal with the issue? Yeah? The other thing is I think it is, it is a bit uh, rich for Malaysians to claim or uh, well, for Najib and Hadi to claim to be champions of Rohingyas when we in actual fact treat the Rohingya refugees here uh, numbering about 120,000 in our camps quite badly I think there are Al Jazeera videos out there about, you know, about conditions of uh, Rohingya people down here uh, I'm not sure even that the kids are being uh, educated or given free education uh, I don't know what the quality of uh, life they have at the moment if they can't work yeah? uh, then lastly uh, the Rohingya death camps along the thai Malaysian border until today we don't have any real resolution to the matter it appears that this story is going to be covered up or there's just impunity for the people responsible for those death camps so as I said cakap tak, sam, tak, tak super bikin that is the problem with the Najib administration now last issue Trump and Najib meeting in White House 
Now everybody is know now that <laughs> that the meeting really didn't talk about one MDB, didn't talk about North Korea, didn't talk about Malaysian visa program. It was basically Najib telling Trump that I love you. I've spent a lot of money in America. We're gonna buy 42 billion of airplanes from America from uh, from Boeing. You know, Kazana's got invested 30 billion in uh, in US. Is gonna invest more. Basically, Najib was just talking to a person who only cares about making America great. But the question then is, if you are spending billions and billions on America, what is Najib spending on Malaysia? How is he going to make Malaysia great? And mind you, this money are not uh, easy to come by. This money, the bulk of it, the Malaysian borrowings, is coming from China for infrastructure projects. How will the Chinese feel that the uh, money that they lend to Najib is now being used to make America great again? So, bottom line, that meeting, it's a farce, it's a joke, it is meant for political mileage. I think it is sad that Malaysia has to do this just to give Najib some credibility in the, in the international world. Okay, so that's it for uh, Q&A this week. Hi everybody, welcome to Monday Night Chat. This is the farewell segment of this show. This is where we say goodbye to Tanya and Adira for their services for the past two years. Okay, so Tanya and Nadia were supposed to give their farewell speech, but because of the lack of time, they were rushing to get their visa approved and, you know, the whole UK transition. So I am here to give a farewell speech on their behalf. I will try to impersonate them as best I possibly can, but they are quite um, individualistic personalities, so it's quite difficult for me to... Uh, but I'll try, I'll try, okay. Okay. Hi! Tanya here with a final farewell post as research officer to Wong Chen before I fly off to study in Oxford for two years. What I've learned from serving alongside the P104 office family can't be fully expressed in a Facebook post. Yes, we stole this from a Facebook post. But these wise words of an Oxford alumna do help. It is not our part to muster all the tides of the world but to do what is in us for the succor of those years wherein we are set, uprooting the evil in the fields that we know, so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. What weather they shall have is not ours to rule. J.R.R. Tolkien You don't need to work for an MP to know that corruption and injustice stain our country. But one year of policy research Parliamentary proceedings and community service constantly and clearly puts it in your face. It's not in any of our capacities to fix all that's broken in Malaysia's systems, but we can do what's in us for the good of our country. I'm thankful to have worked with those who do just that. Wong Chen raises the standard of policymaking in Malaysia and mentors his staff and interns to do the same. Why be Hannah Yeo's office downstairs? that's a stuff together, exemplifies teamwork between MP, Adun and local council. Our volunteers make time on Mondays for service night or on Thursdays for phone banking with Invoke Malaysia. Whether you're an honest politician, keeping yourself free from love of money or an honest employee, doing your job as best as you can do. Thanks for serving Malaysia in your own way. My job here might be over, but I will fight for our country continues. Thank you so much Tanya. We wish you all the best in everything that you do. Have a fun time in Oxford and I personally hope to be able to see you soon in two years time. Next we move on to Nadira's speech. <clears throat> if you had told me to consider a job in politics two years ago, I'd have answered with a withering laugh and a resolute no. And yet, here I am, having just completed my tour of duty with my Member of Parliament and already reminiscing the wild, unpre unpredictable and occasional I don't actually know what I'm doing moment signature to the office. It's been a heck of a ride. Whoops, okay. Not going to lie though, there are times I won't exactly miss. As an officer to a politician, bearing the brunt of the ugliest side of humanity was a daily occurrence. It's one thing to read about the constant mess the country's going through, it's quite another to witness 
and oftentimes experience the selfishness of cold, corrupted cowards. Of course, I'm not just referring to those working exclusively in politics. Idiocy is indiscriminate of profession. I found that out the hard way. But despite the two-year beating my idealism has taken, it remains surprisingly intact. In fact, it's taken a different form now, a more pragmatic, rational one, I think. And while unsavory individuals have had a hand in tempering their idealism, the ones who have truly shaped it are those standing at the other end of the spectrum, the inspiring, selfless angels whose friendships I'm not entirely certain I deserve. There is an army of you superheroes I owe my thanks. YB Hena Yo and her entire office, my spirited bunch of P104 intern children, the regular Invoke Klana Jaya phone bank volunteers, the various community leaders of Sri Satya and Subang Jaya, and a handful of statespersons and their supporting staff who are actual servant leaders. However, my deepest gratitude goes to P104. The value of the lessons I've gained from my time at the office is immeasurable. I've learned that the battles worth fighting for are often the toughest. I've learned that hypocrisy may lie behind apathy and inaction. I've learned that it's important to always do the right thing, even if and especially if another resents it. But above all, I've learned that in striving for a better tomorrow, whether for the country, state or community, never forget the reason you choose to fight. The office embodied this lesson when part of our reason became each other. And it shows, regardless of whatever setback the office was thrown headlong into, we never stopped looking out for one another in ways unique to each p 104 in Wong Chen insisting we go on an office trip to see fireflies, Abigail brewing us hot chai tea after a grueling day at work, Tanya buying us gifts out of the blue for no particular reason. Those are just the small gestures. I haven't even gotten to the significant ones, or those from our office volunteers, yet. That said, I'm not implying that we are the perfect posse. Far from it. We are a ragtag bunch of misfits who stumbled and fumbled into politics almost entirely by accident. I personally question on a regular basis the sanity of my choice to delay my pupillage and join a team who has chosen to shoulder a seemingly insurmountable challenge. But in the midst of the unbridled laughter and angry tears, the teasing lilts and the exasperated sighs, we became each other's constant reminder that there is some good in this world and it's worth fighting for. So thank you to each and every one of you who have given me unconditional support it is only fair that I pledge mine in return. Stay whelmed and may the force be with you all. That was from Nadira. Thank you so much Nadira and Tanya. This is a small section that they probably don't know that I'm about to say and boss as well. But I just want to say that the past two years working with the both of you has have been incredible. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Thank you for being amazing partners in crime. And yes, as you all can tell, I'm the more emotional feeling one out of the three of us. We made an awesome, strong tripod in the office. And I know that our friendship can surpass anything that comes its way. Thank you so much. If you hadn't worked here, I wouldn't have had the immense pleasure and honor working with you. I love you too. Take care and God bless.